Good morning everyone, it's just past 11 o'clock here in Inverness and I hope everyone's well, it's a beautiful day here so just check everything's going on Facebook that looks like it's looks like it's all going all right so I hope you enjoyed uh, the session last night with uh, John Collins on, on confidence John's a, a great guy and, and very generous with his his time experience and, and knowledge there um, I know there was a slight problem with the broadband connection but I hope you got a lot out of it I thought there was some great material there you know and it, it's about if you heard John speaking we're talking about confidence a lot of the groundwork in terms of self-belief in yourself as a person take away from football you know never mind kind of self-confidence and self-belief playing football but self-confidence in yourself as a person is built up in uh, your younger years you know it's built up you know and, and before primary school going into primary school you know the beliefs that are developed there about yourself you know, that is why as a parent or as a coach, if you're working with young players or young kids, you know, the environments that you set up to allow them to develop their perception about themselves, their self-image and, and the development of a growth or fixed mindset, that happens fundamentally at, at a young age. So, you know, if, if you're a coach and you're working with younger kids there or, or younger boys or girls, that's a, a, a huge privilege, huge responsibility. But a lot of the time you don't get to see, you know, the ultimate success that you've helped develop, which is, you know, when they go on to play a higher level or, which I think is even more important, the lessons they've learned within football when they take that into into their um, their world as a, a you know as as a young person or as a you know an adult, they're taking the lessons learned in football into their world there. So it's a huge privilege um, to be able to you know to be able to be involved in developing not just peop uh, footballers but human beings as well you know giving them opportunity to experience in a safe environment the joy of learning skills and taking that into their their life you know without when you learn one thing that increases your self-belief they can learn something else as well and their self-confidence in themselves that they can play a game and uh, not just win or compete but be part of a team you know football and, and sport in general offer so much about being able to work in a team, being able to communicate, be able to develop the, the skills. And uh, as a coach, you know, that's the, the, the great privilege we have a lot of the time is being able to um, have a, a input into the development of people as well. And if you listen to, to what John was saying, so much of it was on preparation. You know, so much of it was, have you prepared before you go to do something to the best of your ability? You know, the simple non-negotiables for yourself should be, are you looking after yourself well enough? You know, are, are the easy things are, am I eating right? Am I getting enough rest? Am I drinking enough water? Am I physically doing enough to be able to compete and play a game? A competitive game now the the great thing about putting a focus on them as a player or as a person or as a coach is they are totally a controllable one you know your mindset of how you approach hard work or the interest you take in diet and nutrition is something that you can always um, get a lot that you know you can always have a lot of control about so if you haven't done that so far you know, get your head around that. And I'm going to post something up uh, a little bit later. I've um, taken a little step as well within the within the within this group and within this page. I'm going to be, you know, here's mainly mindset, mental skills, psychology, 
leadership, emotional intelligence. But I want to give you, um, because I'm I'm fortunate enough to work, you know, at, at the pro level within football. I'm wanting you to get access to other material that will allow you to develop as a coach. So um, I've got a couple of people, I'll introduce them to you later, that um, I've worked with in the past at pro clubs and pro academies who've been going to be helping us on the physical and nutrition side. So I'm going to put something up a little bit later about a nutritional program or kind of guidelines for nutrition for coming back to play after this lockdown i think that'll be really useful because i'm a great believer in the holistic approach you know you can't just work on the psychology and not train you know you can't just train and not work on the psychology you can't train and work on the psychology but not eat the right things or get the, the uh, uh, right amount of rest and you need the good people around you as well so we're all my philosophy is we're always looking at in a whole so i'm going to be putting something up there as well about nutritional support and how you do that as well and give you some guidelines or some hints on how to do it so i hope everyone kind of got a lot out uh, of john's um, interview my interview with john last night and i've left it up on the page if you haven't seen it i'm mean, aware there's some crackly bits because uh, the broadband wasn't a, as great as it could be but yeah that's life isn't it that's uh, first world problems have we ever seen them and i was saying to john isn't it incredible you know technology that i can stream an interview with him live into this page now you know pretty easily as well but also you know, the growth mindset for myself and John is getting our heads around the technology and be willing to not do it perfectly every time because uh, taking actions rewarded, guys. Always remember that. Taking actions rewarded. It's always easy to kind of be a spectator in the, sp the stand that kind of shout and snipe at the players on the park that you don't think is good enough, but real kind of courage for us all is getting on and trying it even though you know it's not going to be perfect or even though you will make mistakes get on and try things this week guys get on and try it as well and if the other thing that one of the other things there were so many things that i loved there uh, which john spoke about was when he was taking going up to take the penalty against brazil in the world cup 98 in france can't remember how many millions was watching it you know, how many, the opening game, huge game, and uh, Scotland got the penalty and he went up to take the penalty. And if you noticed what John said, what he said was, all I focused on, my focus was on what a great opportunity to level the game. Hit it hard, hit it well. So he was focusing on the process and he was focusing on what he wanted to achieve, not what he wanted to avoid. He wasn't going up saying, whatever you do, don't miss this. You know, and that's the same because that put pressure on you, your body tenses up. Any of those people on the call that play golf know this one. What You know, you had, in Scotland we call it a burn or it could be a water hazard. You're going up and you have to uh, seven iron to the green and uh, the burn's in front of you in the water, the little stream. And in your head you go, whatever you do, don't hit it into the water. And it goes, plop. You know, remember uh, Van der Velt in, in the British Open when that happens. So he put his focus on what he wanted to achieve, not what he wanted to avoid. All right? Hit it hard, hit it well, great opportunity to equal the match. And he hit it sweet and clean. And he said, you know, the, the goalie went the right way, but it went in. And then what did he do? He said he went over and he celebrated with the team, but he over, went over to the part of the park where... His family were as well. So always have good people around you, whether it's family, friends, people that support you in your goals and your aims to achieve them as well, who'll be there when you fall down, who'll be there when you are success, and, and they treat you the same either way. And that brings me on to another point I would make. Last night I was, I was uh, after I did you know the call, I went on to BBC Sport, and I was following my hometown, my wee village team, Brora Rangers, who had an incredible result. I don't know if anyone's seen it, where they brought, uh, beat Hearts 2-1 in the Scottish Cup. Probably one of the, the biggest, ups, well, definitely one of the biggest upsets ever in the Scot Scottish Cup, and arguably the biggest upset ever in the Scottish Cup. 
And what makes it even more incredible, you know, I know quite a few of the guys really well. I know the manager, um, Stevie Mackay, um, very well. And Heinze and Craig Campbell there are doing a great job. And if you heard Stephen's kind of interview after, he said what makes it even more incredible was they've only played one game since since uh, the lockdown in one game in January, I think. I haven't played in three months, five training sessions, you know, and one bounce game or something before they played Hearts, top of the championships. And uh, I think you, it's pretty... Um, obvious to say everyone just gave their all in that game as well and the biggest thing for me of that game which is a testament to all the boys that were playing and everyone around in the club the biggest testament was when Hearts equalised at about 75 minutes within five minutes Brora took the lead again that's real resilience as a football club there so well done Brora Rangers and as we say many a time um, been up at Digeon Park and we were laughing because there's Digeon Park, if anyone's been there, if they're in Scotland, there's a hill behind it. And we used to call it Poverty Hill or Hungry Hill. So if you had no money to get into the game, she would stand on Poverty Hill and watch the game for nothing. And maybe get in at half time when they stopped taking money. So if there was anyone there watching from Poverty Hill, I'm sure you, had, you, were, you were there at, you know, if not the greatest moment or one of the greatest victories uh, in the Scottish Cup and certainly in Brora's history as well. So well done to Stephen and all the boys there as well. And it's just a great example of of actually approaching some, something with confidence, hard work, No, it won't always go to plan, have resilience and keep on going. And tonight, what I'm, I will be involved in tonight is I'm doing a session on confidence at the, for the Rangers Online Academy. So if anyone's... Um, a member or subscribe to that I'll be doing a session for that I think there's three or four hundred uh, players involved in that and confidence Um I used to do with when people could travel you know they did a great program where clubs and teams came over to Scotland and were involved and were round at Auckland Howie as well and trained but I'll be speaking on that and doing an interactive session on developing confidence tonight there so if you're on that I look forward to seeing you um, I might do, I might put up, uh, if there's interest, I might do the same session through um, this page as well, which is a session on developing confidence and self-belief as a player. It's only about 30 minutes, 45. That's long enough, certainly I find. So if there's interest in that, just write yes below and we'll get that sorted out. And uh, probably the most, the easiest way to get involved in learning mental skills would be to get that package of books that I put together. So I put three of my books together, 12 Hidden Laws of Performance, Talent and Limited, which is in Growth Mindset, and uh, Soccer Mindset, which is applying mental skills, and especially at the youth level. And it's just an, a, a simple way of getting material to go and use. But invest in yourself, guys. I'm not saying you have to go and buy that book because they're my books, but go and invest in yourself. That's what I did. I'm often asked, you know how did it, how was I able to kind of work at the level I'm working at now and you know I haven't worked just in football I've worked in motor racing right the way up to, to Formula One GP2 underneath Formula One GP2 you know a lot of Olympians especially in winter sport the rugby league as well and uh, one of the key things that helped me was out a doubt and I did that other people wouldn't I invested a lot of money, sometimes when I didn't have it, in educating myself and traveling and going to work with good people and having a go as well. You know, you can't do things. You can't kind of do things without investing in yourself, guys. You can't do things and say, oh, why not wait on that? Or I'll do this when someone pays me to do it. Go and invest in yourself, whether it's with... Not saying what just with me, just go and whoever you want want to invest in yourself, but you have to invest in yourself. There's no shortcuts to this stuff, guys. No shortcuts to success. Hard work, having a, a positive mindset, being resilient, and really trusting and and ex and picking up the information and then executing it. So have a great day and if you're interested in, in me doing that confidence session or workshop, just put a yes below and uh, I'll see if I can do that going forward. Okay, take it easy guys.